Hey y'all, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate some helpful tips for organizing your Pro Tools sessions. I'll be focusing on a post recording, pre mixing session. So most of the tips will be focused on this portion of recording, but can be applicable to many stages of the process. Organization is key to a quick workflow. Anything we can do in the beginning stages to let us solely focus on the musical and artistic aspects will greatly improve the overall product and our enjoyment of the process. I'm going to assume that you have already named everything properly. Quickly navigating the session will only be possible if you have done so, and nothing is worse than seeing audio underscore 01, 02, etc. If you need to name a track, simply double click on it, type in the name, and then click command return to quickly go to the next track. Next, let's put the tracks in a logical order. There is no right or wrong here, just personal preference. I usually like drums first, then bass, guitar, keys, effects, vocals last, and then the master track always last. Some people like to use groups. I find them useful re for recording, but dislike them while mixing. However, we can create groups by selecting all the tracks and then hitting Command G. I'll select the first track in the drums, scroll to the last one, hold Shift and click on it. I'm now going to press Command G to create the group and title it appropriately. As you can see here, we can add tracks to the group, take ones away, and modify the different attributes and globals. If we need to modify this later down the line, we can simply right click on the group and select modify. As you can see, because the drum group is active, if we solo one of the tracks within that group, they're all going to be soloed. You can color code the tracks if you'd like. Personally, I never do this, but if it helps you to navigate the session, then go for it. Since our drum group is on, we can simply double click on any of the track colors and color it differently. For now, I'm going to bypass all the groups by pressing Command Shift G. As you can see over here, all the groups are now grayed out. The next thing I like to take care of is routing, especially when you have a multi-tracked instrument such as drums. Let's select all the drum tracks, hold Option Shift, which essentially means all of the selected, and select an output. Let's select the last tracks output and click on new track. Option shift, click, new track. Let's name this appropriately. It's going to be drum bus and create a stereo aux. As you can see now, all the drum tracks are now outputted to this bus, which then goes to the stereo aux with the input being that bus. We can now process all these drums together and we now have a single fader to raise and lower the drums. Let's take this a step further by bussing these snares together. Let's select the snares, hold Option Shift, click on the output, select New Track, and then title it Snare Bus. Make sure it's Stereo Aux and hit Create. Let's then bus this Stereo Bus to the Drum Bus. So the snares now are bussed to this overall Snare Bus and then to the Drum Bus. Let's now solo safe all of the buses by command clicking on the solo, both the snare and the drums. This allows you to solo any of the tracks without having to additionally click on the solo on the bus. I'm now going to apply this process to all these guitar doubles. Creating markers is extremely helpful for quickly navigating sessions. We can press return on the number pad while we are at a location in the timeline to create a marker. I like to make the start and end marker number one and two respectively for reasons that I'll explain in a minute. Let's go through and create markers at the start end and also the verses, choruses, bridges, etc. If we now open our memory locations window with command number pad 5, we can see all of our markers. We can now fly to them quickly by using the number pad. Press period, the number of the location, and then period again, and we're now at that location in the song. So if somebody wants to hear chorus number 2, that's memory location 5. So I'm going to hit period 5 period, and it instantly went to chorus number 2. We can now select the whole song by pressing period one period, holding shift and pressing period two period. That now selects the whole song. 
from the start to the end. Now we can bounce the song to the exact same parameters every single time. There are many ways to organize your sessions and a variety of ways to accomplish all of these tasks that I just explained. Keep experimenting until you find a method that works best for you.